Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett, this is The Ramble, and uh, I'm just sitting here waiting to get a call from the hospital to see that the operation is over with. Uh, I'll tell you more about it. I couldn't stick around because it was getting pretty late. They, but they were supposed to put her in uh, the operating room at 4.30. And uh, by uh, 6.30, they told us it would be another hour and a half. So uh, she kicked me out of the room and said, go home. you got stuff to do. You need some rest. And, uh, you know, all I can do is wait. And I felt terrible about leaving. But we'll talk about that later. Uh, hopefully before uh, this interview we're about to do here on the program is over with, I may get a call from the doctor and find out what the hell happened. Okay? Meanwhile, we've got a, somebody... Uh, 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 an ex-wife to talk to. Ladies and gentlemen, looky there, wearing a lovely hat, it's Ronnie Bennett. Hi, Ronnie. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. I would have gone into the whole ex-wife thing, but we've done that enough already. But that sometimes people time. wonder, why is her name Bennett? And his name is Bennett. And the reason is, she had hers legally changed. <laughs> and mine is simple. It's too com. Don't even go there. Yeah. It's too complicated. It's, it's the one good thing you got from me. What, a name? Out, out of the marriage, yeah. Oh, well, you know, I don't, I, I've don't. i often said I wouldn't do it now, but then I needed to. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so uh, how are you doing? I'm okay. As we all know, uh, she has uh, cancer. Shall we just say it? Or we, we won't. Untreatable cancer. Untreatable cancer. Yes. Um, I hate that term. So do you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I always thought everything was treatable or they could attempt to treat it. You well, know? and treatable in this sense. Let me just say this clearly. Is that I, every two weeks I'm taking chemotherapy and that cannot cure these cancers, which the chemotherapy last year seemed to do to some with the surgery to some degree. Mm -hmm. What this does is delay the growth of the tumors. So I have a little bit longer healthy time before the cancer really kicks in yeah so um you know as long as i can tolerate the chemo um it gives me time that i wouldn't have had otherwise yeah but i mean there it, when they say it it's uh, inoperable it just seems to me that everything is operable uh, you no, know maybe not with success but that it's operable. Well, then why would you even attempt if you knew it couldn't why, be sick? Why, why wouldn't they operate on the tumors, for instance, to try and remove the tumors? Because they can't. That's all. You mean... Just let it go, please. It's okay, not okay. no, I, I don't want to I'm get not into willing, it. I did a whole column on my blog yesterday about everybody's got a I, goddamn that's, cancer that's, cure. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, because I read that, and I thought it was an amazing piece of writing. And I thought it was an important piece of writing, and I felt that it was something you had to tell people about here today. And that is that the, all these people that have their so-called cancer cures who somehow, because, I don't know, I guess they read your blog or whatever, start sending you these emails touting their potions and liquids and witch incantations. Right. And, I mean, you know, to, to my reader's credit is that the ones that were sent to me via the contact link on my blog, Yeah, these are not any names I recognize. They are not people who comment regularly that I've gotten to know right. or written me emails before. They're strangers. Mm -hmm. So they troll the web, you know, looking for people who might be desperate with cancer that would do anything. And, you know, I think that in my case... I've been pretty straight ahead about what's happened to me. You know, You're right. um, I, I hate the phrase terminal, but that's exactly what it is. And I'm not, I don't believe in miracle cures. And the most important thing about that is that if there were miracle cures for cancer, 
we would all know about it. And they would some, not be a secret. And there would be a new billionaire on the on the or a whole the bunch horizon. of them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And um, so, you know, I'm going with these people. One of my nurses at OHSU, I'd say she's in her early 60s. She's always been an oncology nurse, always. Wow. She's got more knowledge about cancer than anybody. You know, I mean, how many hundreds, maybe thousands of patients has she had over the years? She knows a lot. Well, how how a great a person is she? Because she it has decided to take a part of medicine, which I would consider to be very depressing. Mm-hmm. You know. Lots of people. I mean, we've gotten better and better over the years of being able to cure some kinds of cancers mm -hmm. if you get them early enough. Better than when we were young, when you and I were young. But mostly people die of cancer. Well, you know, they always talk about curing cancer. And I always said, well, th that's a kind of weird term because cancer is an overall umbrella term for a whole bunch of different diseases that mm -hmm. do approximately the same thing, but in entirely different ways. Mm -hmm. And and so how do you say you're going to cure cancer? You can't find just one thing that's going to cure well, them all. Here's what happened. Here's what happened, Alex. When you and I were young, in our 20s, teens, 20s. Oh, oh by the way, folks, in case you're listening, yes, we're talking about cancer. That's yeah. a good, uplifting topic that everybody no, wants me, to hear. Let me, let Go me ahead. make this Go ahead. clear. Go ahead. When you and I were young, our te after World War II and into our teens and our 20s, mm -hmm. what happened in that period of time is that science just went fabulously crazy and invented vaccines for just about every childhood disease that you and I were subjected to, you know, yeah. or might have died from if we'd gotten them when we were little kids. Mm -hmm. And now... Just about every childhood disease can be controlled with vaccines. I don't even want to go to the anti-vaxxers. This is not part of the discussion Fuck today. them. But, um, but everybody assumed that cancer would be next in those days. I certainly did. Most people did. And do you remember back then in the 50s, people whispered the word cancer? You didn't say it out loud. There was something you couldn't really talk about cancer. But it's certainly because of the huge success with vaccines for childhood diseases, expected cancer to be next. Well, you know, here we are 50, 60 years later, and it's not done yet. Right. And I got caught. I mean, both of my parents died of cancer. Um, and the same kind of cancer that I have, in, in the case of my father. Um and I smoked for a lot of years. So, you know, you know, shit happens. Yeah, my family, my father died of, uh, what was it, pituitary tumor mm -hmm. when he was 59. And my mother lived to be uh, over 100. Uh, right. And uh, she survived by just being annoying. So uh, <laughs> there is that. <laughs> Excuse me, one of my little side effects here is a runny nose. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, these people who come up with these, these phony cures and then prey on people, say, like you, by writing you and knowing somehow you have cancer. I mean, their greatest talent is well, not Well, I haven't made a secret of it online. You no. can look up cancer and I'll turn yeah, up. But, but we could say their greatest talent is, is not curing cancer, but preying on people with it. You know, well, they yeah, managed to seek me, them out. I think part of the danger is, I mean, when I see these things that come in, I know exactly what they are immediately. But that's because I've accepted what's happened to me, that many, many cancer patients are desperate. They want a few more days, some more weeks, maybe more years. Yeah, absolutely. And they're desperate for anything. And that changes how your brain works. Right. You start to believe in things that you wouldn't otherwise. Mm -hmm. And... It's a terrible, terrible thing to prey on people like that. Just yeah. and they spend all the money that they've got on these expensive. Oh well, I mean, that aren't going to do anything. Look at people like Steve McQueen and, and the <coughs> like that we know publicly. Who, Somebody mentioned him to me on my blog. What about Steve McQueen and cancer? Uh, if I remember correctly, he started. He went down to South America looking, chasing a cure. I see. Okay. I don't remember that. Yeah, thing. among other things. Uh, and there was uh, who else was there? No, there wasn't anybody else that I that I know of. Uh, Andy Kaufman dabbled a little bit in looking for cures. 
uh, but eventually just realized they were all phony. He went to the Philippines where these the guys who will, uh, like, uh, put their hand in your body and they'll pull out oh, this chicken, oh, th- you know, and tell you that they've cured your cancer. Right. And and he went back thinking, well, I guess I'm cured now, and then went to see a doctor who said, no, yeah, it's just, no, you know. know. sad. It's really sad. It's, and it's sad it's because you get... Thing, and it's, I, it's, I think I said in my column yesterday that... I really, really, it's, it's, I've, I've never hoped for such a thing before, but I hope there's a hell for these people. They are evil. They are despicable. They are terrible, terrible people. Yeah. And they're making themselves rich over people who are desperate. Yeah. And they don't, and, and it's all fake. And I just think it's all But fake. some people should go to your blog, which is timegoesby.net, and read what you wrote about it. You showed a lot of different uh, things that you you know that you knew about that people had offered you like a, what snake venom? No, that wasn't offered to me. But when I was looking around for things online, there's one company or person or something that claims to be able to cure cancer that uses snake venom. I mean, then now you're into faith healing, you know. And uh, well, I mean, faith healers have there's a special place in hell for faith healers too, as far <coughs> as I'm concerned. You know. So, and same thing for these guys, you know. So, um, it's, I, you know, I don't you know. Said it, the, it, the, it's just awful, and I just wanted to say something about it. So you I say the government closed down about 20 of them or something? There was a whole no, lot. Didn't, they didn't close them down. There's no, I, Apparently, I didn't look deeply into it because I have cancer, and I don't have a lot of time. But, um, but what the FDA did two years ago was send out letters to i think it was 14 companies for something like 50 products 40 or 50 products that uh they were selling that had no um absolutely no can't cure cancer but were claiming that it could prevent treat or cure cancer Mm -hmm. and if you go to wikipedia and type in something like phony cancer cures or something they have a huge long list of more than a hundred of known phony cancer cures either been disproved or never tested and um, well you you know your theory is the best if somebody had invented a cure for cancer they would be a millionaire by now and everybody would be eating a pack no it yeah. would not be a secret your doctor would be using it for you yes yeah. exactly yeah, exactly so, <laughs> he's not oh there's a cure out there but we're not going to use it come on yeah, yeah. <laughs> give me a break <laughs> would you like to know why i'm wearing a hat well uh, yes I, i'm beginning to suspect why you're wearing a hat but uh, why are you wearing a hat i have no hair or very close to no hair now you know this you only started doing this chemo two weeks ago uh-huh or, or two t- two t- times ago, about a month ago. Three weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, one, two, three, four. Four yeah, weeks ago. Yeah, four weeks ago, a month ago. And uh, last time you did chemo, you didn't lose your hair. Well, last year when I had chemo, it yeah. got thinner, but not so much that I couldn't have a reasonable hairstyle. Yeah. Um, this time, you know, you've heard it all your life. You've re- or read it somewhere. Comes out in clumps. Somebody's talking about their their chemo and their hair came out in handfuls yeah it's exactly how it happens <laughs> I took a shower, washing my hair and this giant handful of hair came out i mean huge d- draped down and of course the first thing you think at least if you're me is to god don't drop it you'll never get it cleaned out of the drain and i kept doing it and more and more and more and more kept coming out <laughs> I knew, I had a pile on the edge of the tub, like you know, the, this this up here, this deep. I didn't think it would and, happen and that the fast. The rest of it stayed, but I had these little hanks of hair sticking out in weird places, so I just cut them all off, and I've got hair about this long. Well, don't feel bad. Look. <laughs> yeah. you know? well, see, I would prefer to have a smooth top like yours than this little sprouting that I have. Well, you can shave. Well, you know, I, I'm I'm betting I have another chemo session tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I'm betting I lose the rest of it. This well, see, time. here's what happened. The hardest part for me when I went started losing my hair was, you know, it does. I do have hair up here. If you feel there's like hair, okay. Do you, do you shave it? I shave it, but I it was it, the first time I had to shave it was an admission of something. Then, you know that. Um, 
To begin with, I had a friend, he's, he's gone now, Bob Schimmel, who was a comic comedian. And I was wearing my hair so that it was down here, right? But I was losing it up here. Ben and he, Franklin? Yeah. And he said, cut it short, really short. I said, why? Well, he says, that's preemptive baldness, that you look better, you know, when you cut your he's hair right. short. You, know, right. you don't have that Danny DeVito look, you know, uh, <laughs> when you cut your hair short. So then uh, I, you know, so I started cutting it short. And of course, I was like this up there. But of course, I was keeping every inch of what I could. And finally, I just said, ah, I'll shave it. And I shaved it. Do you use an electric razor or a hand razor? I use a, uh, uh, well, for that, I use a regular hand razor because Ooh. it's too close to the head, right? You know, mm -hmm. but for the beard and everything, I use a, you know. Well, I was, I was, and for the rest of it, I use a, I use a barber. Uh, yeah. oh, okay. You know, but I'm not really very upset about this. I mean, given my predicament, uh -huh. losing my hair is not a big thing. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. I don't really care. And you know I something? A lot of hats. And tomorrow I'm going shopping for a wig. Well, I don't know about that. Choices. I don't know about that hat with all those feathers coming out of it. I think it's kind of cute. Well, it, yeah, but on video, it kind of looks like. I don't know. It's it's okay. I'm not taking it off. <laughs> I'm, oh, no, I'm not. I'm not asking you to. Uh, but uh, uh, here's the best part about you going bald. You're not graying anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was so white there was nowhere to go. Yeah. Um, it, hey, it saves in shampoo. You don't have to buy shampoo anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, I had just bought a new bottle of shampoo when this happened. <laughs> Oh, no. And I don't need it now. And um, it's easier. You don't have to spend a lot of time on your hair. Of course, my poor hair cutter loses me as a client. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you're gonna get you're gonna get you're gonna get a wig. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, but so, sometimes a, a hat. And let me tell you, this is serious. Sometimes a hat isn't. You just don't want to wear a hat for one reason or another. Yeah. So you wear a wig. But And the reason for me not to go bald, we're accustomed to men, old men being bald, even mm. young men being bald yeah. to shave their heads. Um, and some young model-type women, gorgeous women, go bald for periods of time, and that's very dramatic. But for somebody my age to go around with a bald head hanging out, the first thing people think is, oh, chemotherapy, and they don't know what to say to you. They, they get scared and they right. they don't know the right thing to say. So I want to avoid that. When a woman gets it young, there are many different little afflictions that can make you go bald. And so they, you know, some women who have gone bald embrace it, but they're 35, you know, or they're 30. But when you're old, there's only one reason a woman goes bald. Yeah. And uh, so, um, you know, I, I don't want to put people in that position because it's hard to have a conversation. When people don't know what to say. Yeah, yeah. So, better better to wear the wig, right, rather than start the conversation. I don't have to wear it all the time. So I when mean, you get the wig, are you going to get a gray wig or are you going to get a a fully hair colored wig? Oh no 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 no! I want near as near to my old my regular color the color I am now as possible. Yeah. Look, I would look dumb with brown hair, you know, or something. It'd well, you should stupid. have saved some of that hair from the bathroom. You could take it with you to the wig store and say, speak. match I, this. I want to tell you something. I have a friend yeah. who has a six-year-old daughter. Yeah. And a year, in, some little kids just awe you. They're, they're just awesome. And about a year, a little over a year ago, her daughter came to her and said that she'd heard about a girl her age and who had red hair like her. Not very many kids have red hair right. and freckles. And that she has cancer and she'd lost all her hair. And she said, Mom, I want to grow all my hair my real long so that I can have a wig made for some young girl like me. So she grew her hair and grew her hair and grew. And I've got pictures of her with hair halfway down her back. And then just this week, she snipped off all the hair. Mom's, and she found a wig maker who would make a wig from her daughter's hair for a young girl with cancer who needs it. Isn't that the nicest thing? That's the thing? nicest thing. Well, there's a thing called Locks of Love that does this. I don't this. know. I, yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, there's, a, there's an organization called Locks of Love, and they right. they right. literally have people grow their hair long and people donate their hair to right. them. 
and, and this was not that, and that's not yeah, what's And she important. did it on her own, which is wonderful. Yes. And, Just, and they found a local wig maker who knows somebody, a little girl like her, who had red hair before she lost it, and now will have a wig of red hair. Well, what about what about wonderful. what about her friend? Did her friend die? Or, uh, Pardon me. Did it, what about her friend? Did, didn't she what want? Friend? She said she had a friend who had cancer who had red hair. No, no, no. She heard about someone. Who oh, had I see. Okay, okay. So. Wow, what a what a wonderful classy kid. That, I think that's just fabulous. I love you that. You know, it's a real classy kid. Well, <laughs> Brought up just right, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's wonderful, but uh, I I don't know. I just you know it it it's a whole process you're going through, and I I find it at one in one point for me depressing, okay, and for another part of me revelatory and uh, a lesson. A lesson? Yeah, because you're you're teaching me how to deal with this, you know, and you're dealing with it so well, you know. Well, you don't see me when I'm not on. I know you. I'm sure you've got one face for the world and one face for your mirror, you know. But I'm saying that your what you're writing is so important. And so revelatory for people because this is a process we're all going to go through on on some level. I mean, we may not go through it if suddenly we get hit by a car or we get that that heart attack and drop dead right there, you know. But but most of us, you say, how many? What percentage of Americans get cancer? Forty percent, did you say? It's about forty percent in there of the population. Yeah. And and, and there are other, you know, there are other diseases which are degenerative diseases, and and you're kind of creating a roadmap for the rest of us. Let me tell you something wonderful that happened. Mm -hmm. um, since I started this blog almost fifteen years ago, yeah, I've used a company called TypePad yeah. to publish it. Yeah. And, um, and I pay them every year for the privilege. <laughs> and uh, So uh, enough people, quite a lot of people have said, don't let this blog go away. That It's got a lot of great information in it. And I think they're right. And I think you're right about that. So last week I sat down and I sent an email because they don't take phone calls at TypePad. There, there's this wonderful seven or eight or nine, I don't know how many people who are helpers and you do it by... Um, online, uh, an online e email kind of thing. Right. Uh, and um, so I was stuck with that because I couldn't find a phone number. So I wrote to them and I explained my predicament, is what I'm calling it. <laughs> and, uh, um, and I had a few questions of how could I continue this yeah. and have it be there indefinitely for people to go and look through if they want. And, and figure out how I could pay for it so somebody else has, doesn't have to keep paying for it and what would that cost. And within less than a day, I got a note. And I know it's been so many years, I know the names of all these customer helpers, you know, I know right. every one of them right. via this email thing. They wrote back and said they were going to flip it to a free account. And they were very sorry about my diagnosis, that they loved my blog and blah, blah, blah. Can you, I mean, this is a for-profit company. Now, now, let me ask you, uh, uh, TypePad, do they also put it online for you, or is that something you do yourself? No, it's all, they do all the public, there's a program, you know, that the back end where I put all my stuff, and I can, I can program but I mean, it, I but can you're, you're, schedule it to be published, and it ha and they make it happen. So as time goes by .net, they, uh -huh. they put that online for you. Yes, there's a different company from which I okay. buy that name that I pay mm -hmm. for the name. And there's also a different company that I use to send out the email subscriptions. But TypePad publishes the whole thing, and I have a back end where I can, you know, set it up and, and okay, put in. Okay, but what I'm saying is, is that that, that that URL is up there because of TypePad, and so that's what's going to continue. Well, no, the URL... I own it has to be paid for. Oh yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, it's not. It's any. I mean, yeah, they need the URL, but that's not the important point. So how are you going to keep the URL going? 
it has to be paid for. I haven't taken care of that yet. Yeah. You know, I also haven't taken care of my cremation. It's one damn phone call, and I don't know why I haven't done it. Yet. But I, I want to say this out loud. Okay. It is a lot of work to get ready to die. It is really hard, all the stuff I have to do. Well, you've always been very organizational. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'd like not to spend what time I have left being organized. Yeah. But all of my household accounts and my financial accounts and my banking accounts and all that, the woman who's going to take care of everything when I die has to know all this stuff and passwords and when things get paid and what accounts they get paid from and what needs to be canceled. And I mean, it's just... I'm making a little book for her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's your organizational part of you, you know. Um, used to do the same thing for me. You know, used to keep all the notes about who was going to be on when and, you know, things I needed to know and whatever. Well, I couldn't remember. You have to write it down, you know. I always kept it up here, but it doesn't yeah, work. Well, it you doesn't, got a bit it, memory, it, it doesn't. It doesn't work anymore. It doesn't yeah, work yeah. anymore. Yeah, that, uh, that comes to us all. But um, uh, it, it really is a, uh, you know, I mean, I, I think what you're writing is just very important. And uh, all I'm saying is that, you know, you can probably, you could probably pay for the URL for the next 10 years or something and just keep the thing up. Yeah. Well, I will get it. You know, it's on my list. I've got a list here of all these things I have to do. <laughs> yeah, but that's very nice of TypePad. So yes. everybody, if you need I to do a blog... They're wonderful people. And by the way, they then also sent me, from all of the helpers, all signed it, a snail mail card. Really? Yes. Yes. And, and I hope it wasn't a get well card, because that doesn't exactly... No, no, no. It was a, it's a lovely, lovely card. And, um, and it, it just... These are just terrific people. I've never met them. I don't know what they look like. I've never seen a photograph of them. All I know them is from their yeah. helping me out when I didn't know how to do something. So as long as you've got the URL, they'll make sure that site yes. keeps going. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Terrific. Not a big thing. Because, you know, if I drop dead tomorrow, there's no GabNet anymore. It just, you know. Is GabNet your domain? It's my domain, yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought it was like TypePad. No, no, GabNet's my own domain. Oh, okay. GabNet.net, yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Uh, and, it, you know, I got more use out of it than AlexBennett.com, uh, <laughs> you know, which, which is out there, folks, if you ever want to check it out. There's nothing there, but go ahead and check it out. Hey, listen, I just looked, and we've another 26 minutes have passed. Look at what we've been talking about. Not we're the, just chatterboxes, you and me. We're just chatterboxes. Uh, uh, yeah, I love these chats we have every every uh, other week, and uh, we will continue them as long as you want to continue them. You know, as long as I can. As long as you can, and uh, you know, let's uh, by this time next time will we have a wig by then or? Sure, oh, absolutely. Okay, because then we can see what her wig looks like. That's right. And then decide whether she should just be wearing the hat. Anyway, <laughs> Ronnie, thank you so much. It's Ronnie You're Bennett, welcome. ladies and gentlemen. You. Time goes by. Dot net is her blog. Thank you, Ronnie. Bye. Bye. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Uh, let me uh, just get my picture up. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I had a little problem there. I, I'm, I'm out of it again tonight. But I'll, I'll tell you what happened today, and then we'll get on with, we'll get on with the show. Uh, the program. I don't like to call it a show. I never call it a show. Uh, so if you ever see it as the Alex Bennett Show, no, it is not the Alex Bennett Show. It is Alex Bennett Program or I refer to what I do here as a program. Anyway, uh, let me uh, let me just uh, uh, I'll, I'll turn on the, the Skype line while I tell you this. So today I we had to get her there at the, the operation was supposed to be at uh, what four thirty. We had to get her there at two thirty so they could do all the pre-op stuff and everything. So we got there and they did all the pre-op stuff and they they put her in one of those ugly gowns and. Uh, they uh, took all the information and checked your temperature, which seemed to be a little on the high side, but then it was lower than they thought it originally was. But everything was okay. 
And uh, uh, then all of a sudden the guy comes in and says, uh, listen, they're running a little behind because your doctor had a uh, operation that took longer than he expected. So it looks like your, your uh, estimated waiting time from 4.30, which was the time we were supposed to be doing it, uh, is... Uh, uh, from the is uh, uh, been uh, changed for uh, uh, to about two hours later. So uh, you know, I didn't want I didn't want to leave her alone. Hello, Phil. So hey, I, 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 I I didn't want to leave her alone, and uh, so I just stayed there. I mean, and she was she's sleeping. She they put her on the, on a litter, right? But and she's sleeping. So it's kind of like I, I don't know what I'm doing there. I mean, she's sleeping and whatever. Anyway. I wait around with her for about another hour and a half, <clears throat> and they come to us, and they say, oh, it's going to be another hour and a half. So uh, uh, she finally says to me, look, go home. You know, there's nothing you can do here. And uh, come, you know, go home and do what you got to do, because I was exhausted, and uh, I, I, I needed some sustenance in me, because I hadn't had any food in me. And um, so I... Uh, I, I left her, and I, I felt guilty about it. I just said, look, I, I, I really don't want to go. And she says, no, go, 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 you know. Uh, there's nothing you can do here, right, that will make it any, any better. Plus, as I say, she was sleeping through a lot of it, so it didn't matter whether I was there or not. So I came home. I, when I came home, I felt so guilty about having left, even though she implored me to leave, um, that I, uh, I, I didn't know what to do. Uh, and I was just, uh, I, and I tried to call her, but I couldn't call her because the, uh, ho the uh, hospital only has Wi-Fi. It doesn't have phone service in it. And so you have to make your call through Wi-Fi. And so I tried to call her, but she obviously didn't have her Wi-Fi on. And I just want to say one more time, I love you. I hope everything's going to be okay. I just want you to know I'm here with you and so on. And I got so guilty about that. I said, fuck it. I'm going back to the hospital. I got a, I, I did my posting of my shows, all the things I had to do. I still got three hours before the show. And it's enough time to go back down to the hospital, pop into the room, say hi, and kiss her one more time, and leave. All right? So I go outside. There's not a cab. Nothing. No cabs. It's raining to begin with. So they, you try and get a cab in New York City when it's raining. And I, I go out there, and um, uh, finally this guy, ha this cab goes by me with his light on. And he just goes right by me. I give him the finger. You know, like, come on. You know, you have your light on. There's nobody in the back seat. Why didn't you stop? And then he stops. So I figure, oh, fuck him. He got my finger. I'll stop him and then get in the car. So I get in and I tell him where I want to go. He says, okay. He starts driving down the street. And about halfway down the street, he pulls over to the side. He says, I got to stop here. I got to get some mail. And I said, fuck you. <laughs> you know, and I just. Too bad you too bad you didn't get the cash cab. Yeah, so I so I <laughs> I just got out and I looked and there were no more cabs. So I just said, "Look, I I shouldn't feel guilty about it." She implored me to go saying, "You know, hey, there's nothing more you can do here. You look tired. Uh you've been a good husband all along on this deal. Uh, just go home and rest and you know, the doctor will call you when it's over with." So what I'm doing now because that was at, at like 6.30. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, I'm trying to add Patrick, and I can't. You're going to get you're going to get a call before the show's over then. You know, yeah, I can't get Patrick to call. Oh, hold on a second. Let me, let me hang up on Patrick, and then let me try to call him, okay? Let's see if I can get him to, to pick up. Uh, uh, Patrick, if you're if out there, pick up, okay? Because your phone, your your Skype is ringing. Are you there? Oh boy. Uh, let me try it again here. If he's going. using the new Skype, remember all the problems I was having with uh, getting an error message. Yeah. Uh, there on the uh, on the new Skype, there's a thing called suggested, and if you click on the suggested. That's when I got the error message. But if I went down and actually chose Gapnet yeah. out of the uh, yeah. thing, then it went through. Right, you're not there, are you, Patrick? No, he's not. Uh, let me see here. Uh, no. Well, here here comes somebody else. Uh, uh, let me see here. Um, let me see here. I'm trying to do that. And, uh, there. Oh, Vernon. Vernon Nunn's okay. You there, Vernon? 
Yep. Yeah. Yep, he's there. Let me add uh, Patrick to the call and see what happens. Patrick, finally. I don't know what was going on there. Hey, uh, and, and, and there's Vernon. Vernon, thank you very much for the note. That was a very nice note today. You're welcome. Sent to us. Uh, and uh, hello, Patrick, a guy who's in a wheelchair, so you know what my wife's going through. And uh, uh, it's, it's it, uh, but anyway, so, oh boy, here comes Jeff Stein. All right. Uh, it's, it's all working okay. All right. Uh, anyway, hi, hi, Jeff. Hey. So I finally, I just came home and I was, uh, but I've been, uh, it just, I, you know, uh, I just, uh, I guess it's times like these, you realize how much you really love somebody and you worry about them. And, uh, you know, it, me being there wouldn't have done anything. And once she goes into the, you know, the operating room, I could stay there, but it wouldn't do anything. So, um, yeah, you know, I hope he didn't get around to doing it till 11 o'clock tonight. Then I can go over to the hospital and see her in recovery, <laughs> you know, but, uh, uh, I just, you know, um, it, it, it's just she wants she would just want we wanted it to be over with already you know and it just yeah. wasn't that easy because we're still we, we we did everything on time we left the house at one okay we got there by two we made sure we were there in time or 1 30 got there by two and we had to be there by 2 30 and uh and then we're sitting around we're waiting waiting and then they say another two hours uh and then another hour but she and a was half she was able to sleep right Oh, yeah, she was able to see. They, what they did is she was in a chair, and she said, this is uncomfortable. They said, let's see if we can get you a, a litter, you know. Uh, and and they found one, and they put her in another room with that, and she was lying down. And, you know, I'd look over every now and then. She's fallen dead asleep. So, you know, uh, I'm just, I just didn't, I just felt bad about leaving her there, you know. And and uh, and and yet I was like I was trashed myself, and I needed to get home, and I had to do some stuff in order to do a show tonight. And then when I figured I could do, I had enough time. I thought I'd go back, but I knew that if I went back, she'd probably already be out of that room and in pre-op or whatever. But whatever. So you know, that's the way things are. I you know, I, yeah, somehow just, you somehow know, I feel I, I feel guilty. You know. Recently having an operation, I really didn't want anybody, uh, you know, while they're moving me here and moving me there. I, I didn't want anybody there, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you and say you, she you, may you, feel the same way. You're agreeing with the same thing, Patrick. Yeah, the, the only one that um, I wanted somebody there for mm -hmm. was for my spinal surgery mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. That was a major, major operation. Yeah. So my folks there uh, to talk to just to kind of keep my mind off of what was going to happen. Yeah. I mean, I didn't anticipate being paralyzed, but just the big surgery. But every surgery I've had since then, mm -hmm. uh, I've gone in on my own. You know, uh, like my kidney stones and, and that they're minor little things. And, and what's the point of having somebody wait for you? And, and that type of surgery is a day surgery. So I went at 7 a.m. and I'm home by 2 in the afternoon. Actually, actually, if he had done this in the morning, this would have been a day surgery. She would have been home in the evening. But because it's so late, it, she's going to be in the hospital overnight. So. It sounded like he was fitting her in. You know, when, when they said, I, you know, we have this guy and, you know, I can take her on Friday. It was like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. He fit her in, uh, you know, yeah. uh, and I asked the nurse, you know what I said? I said, it worries me a little bit because, I mean, he seems like he's had a lot of operations today and a lot of long ones. I said, is he, is he up to the task after doing that many? And she said, these guys know how to pace themselves. She said, they're real professionals. And she says, after they do an operation, they take a break to relax and take it easy and everything so they're ready for the next one. That's part of that waiting time, you know. She said, so don't worry about it. It, it, it. In fact, I talked to a friend of Marjorie's just tonight who said that when she went in for her knee operation, they didn't get around to her till midnight. Oh. oh. Yeah. Yes, Patrick. Um, my back surgery took uh, 16 hours. That's crazy to think that somebody could work for 16 hours straight under stress like that. 
that's the thing. That's just like what the reason I brought it up is what Alex said. Oh, is they hate themselves, and I'm sure what it was that they were doing the surgery in four or six hour blocks, and then the doctor would take a break, you know, and then you know continue on. Um, but yeah, it, 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 when you think of 18 hours, think of from right now what time it is. And 18 hours from now, I know that's it's crazy. Done. It's crazy. I, <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. that it was. I, I, but how did you feel? Can I ask you this? I'm not asking you how you felt being operated on, how, you know, the recuperation of the operation. But here you are, 16 hours, you say, under the, under the knife, un, and yeah. uh, it, it, equal to that, under the sedation. What's it like when you come out of 16 hours of sedation? Well, that was the thing is, I, I may have mentioned this before years ago, but I got, when, I, when I woke up, I didn't feel any different than I did from any other surgery. I mean, I was groggy as hell and just more, I, and, you know, just, it, it's like a, a heaviness on you. More so than, you know, yeah. uh, prior surgery. But the thing is, I, I was awakened at about 7 a.m. by a doctor doing rounds. And it wasn't my doctor, just a floor doctor doing rounds. And he's the one that said, um, I hope you like being in a wheelchair because you're going to be there the rest of your life. Oh, what a way to tell you that. How I woke up, and when you when you asked how did it feel, let me tell you whatever weightiness I had left because I was shocked then, and it wasn't my surgeon. And when my surgeon came in a few hours later after he had gotten some sleep, you know I had a, I told him what it and there was some um, let's say professional. Um, problem that were happening between the two doctors uh so you know i never got the chance to come out of the anesthesia in a normal slow way yeah so it was pretty shocking and and not yeah. cool now this is so, a this guy had a hard on for the other surgeon and decided to make your life miserable i, I don't know um it it, it well, that's certainly not a bedside manner, you know. Well, that, well, my doctor, my surgeon, um, had no bedside manner either. Hey, uh, so, hey, 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 Patrick, uh, um, uh, you like walking? Right. Uh, well, uh, you better figure out something else to do with your time. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it, was, it was one of the most shocking things that ever happened. Just being told yeah. it in that way. Jeff, so. Jeff, you you you've been under the knife and you've been uh, oh, under yeah. anesthetic, which uh, I, under uh, what do you call it? You were put out. Amnesia. Man, no, not amnesia. Uh, yeah. Anesthesia. Yeah, anesthesia. 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 How, uh, anesthesia. Well, how long were you out for? We're pretty extensive, as far as the time, which really affects it a lot. But my wife says when I when I when I woke up from this major surgery. Are you she goes, I could, hardly, I could not even wake up. And, and finally, I kind of wake up a little bit. And I could say like one word. That was the only word that would come out of my mouth. Is that due to the stroke? And yeah. And, and the other part was, she said, I look like I was uh, 40 years older than I was the day before. Wow. Yeah, my mother said that. My mother said that I, I had aged. I looked, uh, she, I don't think it was 40 years, but she said I looked a lot older than 27 when I came out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think just being in a hospital can do that to you. You know, like when I went for four and a half days, I can't say I came out the same way I went in. You know, I, I felt just a bit, uh, very tired. It took me, just for four and a half days, it took me several weeks to kind of get back to a certain amount of energy. You know, 
part so, of that could have been all the uh, drugs caused you to be constipated. And, 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 well, those uh, were good drugs. Those were great. Yeah, I'm sure they were, but those they, were great. They, they, they have any time they say to you, well, what kind of, how much pain do you have? Say 10. Okay, just say 10. <laughs> hey, you know, I tried that. Uh, because one and, time, uh, one time I said five to them and it, I went, what, what is this? This is like a Tylenol. slight buzz, you know, it's like Tylenol. <laughs> so then I said 10 and man, I was flying. You know? <laughs> and I was also in the palliative care ward, which really put me off because, you know, I, the first thing I said to somebody when they said you're in palliative care, I said, is there something you're not telling me? Yeah. You know, well, they probably have the best drugs. And he said, yeah, what we're not telling you is we didn't have a room for you anywhere else. And this is what we had where we had a bed. And you're very lucky because it's got the big TV set and, you know, the you're going to die suite. You know, so uh, 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 but uh, it, it, it I didn't really um, at no point was I put out because I wasn't being operated on. I mean, they were just simply there trying to get a, a kidney stone to pass. And, and in the meantime, they had to give me uh, all this wonderful drug, the uh, and, and I would just say 10. And, and because I was in palliative care, they are very good at giving you whatever painkiller you want because they're used yeah. to it, right? So if I said did 10, they, I got 10. Did they 10. give you your last rites? No. They're good at that, too. <laughs> no, but I, I had people in other rooms who were making loud moaning noises. Oh, boy. They were having sex. Yeah, and I, you know, because they were, well, we were all in this one huge room that was curtained off or it was partitioned or I can't remember, but it was partitioned. Yeah. And uh, there was a guy in another another area that was moaning like crazy and and i wanted to just yell will you shut the fuck up but he was dying after all so you know uh, let him make his noise uh, <laughs> but i felt i felt buyer's remorse in a way or whatever you would call it because there i am in palliative care watching the big 27 inch flat screen tv that they give you in palliative care and uh, all the channels i'm getting for free all right and these people are getting the same thing, but they're dying, okay? And uh, I felt kind of guilty about that, you know, that I that are I was. Are you sure that they had the cable package that they wanted? I they better have, <laughs> you know. Uh, I'd want the porno channels at least. Uh, I want to go out that way. Yep, yeah, I'm with right. you. On that. Hell yeah! By the way, I want to make a note of something. Uh, you know, we had the interview with Ronnie. And, and for those people who don't like to hear a discussion about dying of cancer, which she is, uh, too bad, because if I can't do that on a podcast, where can you do it? You know? It was an excellent interview. You know? Where, where else can you and do it? And she's very brave. Yeah. And after the day afterwards, um, <clears throat> she went in for a chemo, and they also did a, uh, a CT scan, and the uh, a, a tumor has gotten larger in her lung. Yeah. So, you know, uh, uh, they're putting her on a different chemo, which may extend her life the, her, the, 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 to a year before she really has really bad effects from the uh, from the tumors. But, it, it, you know, I mean, we know she's I, dying. You know, that's that's a given. And, um, you know, uh, it um, reminded me you, you were talking uh, several months ago second, or uh, last year right. about these drugs that people pay hundreds of thousands of dollars just to get three more months, yes. and uh, and you know obviously uh, Ronnie is not falling for any of that stuff. Well, but, no, it, those uh, are those are the real drugs. Those are the ones I, that advertise on the news that will extend your life if you have cancer. And then you look at the fine print and it says average time extended like two and a half weeks or something like that. Right. And you're going, yeah, exactly. and, and then I look at the cost? price of it online and it's like 30 grand and I'm going 30 grand for two and a half weeks. Yes, Brian. Just going to say, you know, states like Oregon, I think they've expanded right to die legislation. Well, that's what she's um, going to do. Okay. Where yeah. where'd she live? She lives in, po in Portland, Oregon. In okay, Lake Oswego, I, more particularly. So they're going to. So she's going to seek out someone who will give her like medication. Oh, she's already. She's already. Under? She's already talked Good. to them about it. Yeah. She said so when that's the pain. They, they do. They give you a pill or something to swallow to you know so that you can essentially kill yourself on your own terms. Well, yeah. You know? Well, she said to them, uh, "When when will I know it's time?" She said. He said, "We have found that people know when it's time." When it's time time to do that, you know, the pain is enough, or you know, whatever. You just don't want to have to go through anymore, 
and uh, you know, you'll make the decision at the time it needs to be made. We don't have to make it for you. I wonder if they have to do that, or if people feel comfortable doing that when like loved ones are around them, and it's, it's well, you know, look, it's not good look, anyway. You know, I, 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 and again, we're talking about a subject here which maybe is not going to make a lot of listeners happy. But as, again, if you can't do it on podcasts, where can you do it? You know, are you getting people? Yeah, not, everything you, is, uh, not everything is sunshine what, and what, lollipop. What did you say? Sorry, what did you say, Rob? Are you getting people? Are you getting feedback from people if they don't like it? No, not at oh, all. Okay. Not at all. But I was it thinking is, about it. It is brave and it's fascinating. And I'm I listen to them and I watch her and I'm I I. What I get from her is it's a sense of loneliness because we can all listen and try to empathize, but she's going through it. And there's a sense of being alone in that when I listen to it. And she puts on a brave face and you said something about, you know, you put on a brave face and she says, well, you don't see me when I'm not on video. And I can only imagine that loneliness of what she's going through and everything she's trying to do and put her life in order and all that. And, and it's just, it's, it's well, on a touching. positive side, we can, we can say, well, this is the, our last great adventure. Uh, I, uh, however, I'd rather not have that adventure. Uh, yeah. but, it, but, uh, the fact is that, uh, it's also the one other thing in life we do alone. Uh, exactly. You know, the, the I don't care is, how many people around you, how many people love you, how many people think you're wonderful. You're the one that's dying. And in this particular case, she knows there's an expiration date, you know. And that's when why my, I say uh, it's lonely because she oh. has to go through it alone. Yeah. When my ex's father died of cancer, uh, we were at the hospital and it was it was just a short time that he went into the hospital and then things started shutting down. And he knew it was coming. It was something mentally that he accepted and welcomed. Uh, and, uh, you know, then all of a sudden the, the lungs start filling with uh, water and, well, uh, well, and we don't have, Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Patrick. I meant Patrick. Brian. Yeah. Um, it's just a, I don't, it's a straight thought. Don't think, don't read too much in it. But uh, what if, you know, people who are going through that, who decided to take their own lives on their own terms using medication that would do that, what if they got together with other people who made the same decision so that they won't feel quite as alone? They'll be with other people you're who still, feel the same way, alone. and they all just die you're, at the you're same time. You're still alone. I'm not saying she's still, still alone. She may the, not journey, have, yeah. the journey when you cross over is alone. Then they say to each other, you know, I'll see you on the other side. You know, if that there is no has, other that side. Has any coping but, but you have to believe there's another side. Yes, Patrick. I don't. But you know those who do. Yeah, I can say this much. I mean, it, it's a different relation mm -hmm. to what Ronnie dealing with. But uh, I was on a floor when I had my final surgery, mm -hmm. where either fourteen or sixteen other people who were in the same exact predicament, different variations of paralysis but at least not able to walk. And it didn't matter because I was going through what I was going through yeah. on my own. Right. And even when we were in therapy together, um, you, you would have somebody at working on one table and somebody else. You could encourage each other. And that's what a lot of us did because we became, you know, fairly good acquaintances. But in the end... I'm still struggling with what I'm struggling with and somebody else is. So the camaraderie is there, Brian, but it, it is still, it, yeah. it, you're, you're a one man band. Uh, I don't know what Ronnie expects. I think she may want some people there when she does it. May not, maybe not have them in the room with her, but you know, maybe be in the other room and so on. I've seen uh, 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 little documentaries on this about the way they do it in, in, in Oregon and that sometimes there are people in the other room waiting for the, the thing to pass, you know. Uh, it's it's really no different than her passing from just the cancer itself, except that she's chosen the time to do it, you know. And uh, I don't oh, I don't know if I would be brave enough to do it. 
Uh, although I don't know what I would do if the pain got bad enough. I think there may be a point at which the pain gets bad enough that you just go, I don't want this anymore. You know, I don't exactly. know how you can handle it, but you know what I've seen is that they give you so much in the way of uh, drugs or morphine that you don't know what's going on. No, no, you know, no, you, but, no, but just... uh, this is this is this is the actually the the uh, pill kill. No, the, when the they kill don't pill. have the uh, the uh, uh, you know death uh, in states that don't have that either. Yeah, like, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I you know I'm thinking about. Uh, my ex's father, my mother's second husband, yeah, uh, he he also had cancer and passed away. And uh, his daughter was the one that told him uh, at, while he was in the hospital, uh, "You're going to pass, and you probably only have a few hours left." Yeah. And his last, and the last thing he said was, "No shit." <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's. Uh, I mean, I just don't know if I, if I were in that position whether I could take the pill or not. I, I just, could see my last words being something to the effect of, "Let's just get this over with." Yeah, well, yeah. It, it sounds like Gary Gilmore when he got shot in Utah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what he said: "Was let's get it over with." I said, uh, "I said those words, those very same words before in my freshman year of high school when I got in my very first when I got involved in my very first fight." Yeah. Let's just get this shit over <laughs> get with. Get this shit over with. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, it, you know, I mean, um, I don't know. You know, I have such a fear of dying that it's a hard topic for me. And it's kind of a hard thing, you know. Um, Alex, I fear the dying process, the being gone, I it doesn't phase me. But knowing that you're slipping away well, being, and not coming being back gone, it, being, that disturbs me a little. Being gone bothers me because I... I, I I, I want to cling to life. On the other hand, I have not been totally appreciative of life. I've always been fearful. I've always had all kinds of, uh, uh, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm depressed about conscious. life and so on. And yet, I, I want to cling to it. I, I've never I been feel. able to figure that one out. I'm surprised I haven't taken a pipe to myself. Yeah, you know. I, I've I seen it as after you've lost consciousness, after you've lost all consciousness whatsoever, I don't see how it makes a difference, but it's that slipping away into losing your consciousness into being, you know, in a position where you're not going to pull yourself back up from. Oh, I, that's I, 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 I think that that moment of dying probably is very pleasant, oddly enough. Uh, it's a uh, well, uh, that's why I hope uh, I do it. It's, my it's maybe the maybe something. maybe it's the ultimate high because like you hear quick. about people, you know, uh, choking themselves, erotic, uh, erotically choking themselves uh, but to put them close to that. And many Which of them, is, unfortunately, aren't very accurate at what they're doing. But, uh, uh, you know. It's not I, a sensation I want to feel. I yeah. just want it to be done and over with quickly or best solution in my I, sleep when I'm not I even aware it's, that it's happening. It's just a matter of acceptance. You know, you, uh, I, yeah. I, had a, I had a friend that I was visiting every Sunday. He had uh, a, a, a beach, it took three months uh, and he had a, a lung uh, disease that uh, was fatal. And, uh, you know, he was young, he was 70 years old. I mean, we've been friends since I was in my 20s. And, uh, you know, he, he, he accepted it. The only thing he said to me was, I wish I had two more years to see my kids graduate from college. But uh, other than that, it's it, he just he, he was able to accept it and realize that yeah. this is this was inevitable. And I'm, what was what I'm happen. worried about still no phone call. You know, uh, I'm sure if there was well, something terrible, I would hear about that too. But you know, but she has no cell service. You said she, there's no cell service. Well, the, the hospital would the hospital right? they have. Here's what they have. See, I mean, I, you have it on your probably if you have a, a iPhone X like Rob does, uh, you have a thing on your cell phone where you can use Wi-Fi to make the phone sure. call. OK, uh, uh, did you set her up on the Wi-Fi? Well, I did. But here's the problem. If you don't use okay. it for about five minutes, the Wi-Fi goes away. Oh, uh, and so okay. you then have to reinitiate it. Well, if she hasn't got it reinitiated and the phone doesn't have the Wi-Fi going, then I can't call her. Okay. Oh, and the LTE doesn't uh, work in that environment. No, there is no there is no cell service nothing. in the hotel, in the hotel, in the hospital. <laughs> Wait a minute. I hit I hit this. Uh Oh. Mark Green's having problems. Um, Mark, I'm going to have to hang up on you because I can't. There's some problem tonight with some callers. Let me let me try calling him. 
Let's see here. Okay, let me see if we can, if if he if he hears me ringing him, um, but we can attempt. Uh, Mark, if you're listening, you can. Oh, oh, there you are. There you are, Mike. Mark, how are you? I'm, I'm good. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I had to wind up calling you. Uh, that's why you probably heard me ringing or whatever. Do you have a do you have a camp? I haven't called for a, for a good long while, so everything looks different right now. So. Oh, okay. Well, uh, right. can you turn on your camera so we can see you? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Mark hasn't called in a while. It's good to see you, Mark, or hear you yeah, at least last, so far. Last time was like a year ago, February. Really? Um, that or not long, last February. That long ago? Yeah. Wow. Why haven't you been calling? Uh, just because I go to bed at night, I go to bed earlier than this, you uh, typically. Uh, oh, okay. All right. You an East Coaster too? Yep. Say what? Are you an East Coaster uh, like myself? Yeah, I'm in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. Well, uh, I would, I would uh, it. well, it's good to have you here. We, mi we well, missed you. We missed you. Um, so, um. We almost have a full house. One more person will right, have a yeah. full house. Yeah. Once uh, I here find we go. steady employment again, just uh, yeah, I won't be I won't be calling in nearly as much because uh, yeah. you know that that eats up. Uh, well, let's hope, eats up my waking well, hours. Well, then can I say behind the wheel? I hate to say this, but can we hope that you don't get steady employment then? <laughs> well, if it if I could find a fucking job that would uh, that would uh, want people to work evenings, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, but unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case. They want they want morning people. Yeah, and I am a morning person. Yeah, I just don't like waking up to go to work. Hello to Kevin. How are you, Kevin? Does that mean we have ten? Alex and everybody. Yeah, we have ten. With ten with me, that's a full house. I should make a little thing that I can put up that says "full house" when we have it. You know, a little. I, I used to. Huh. Yeah. I used to have a piece of paper. I held. Uh, oh up. yeah, yeah, yeah. You had a piece of paper you used to hold up. But yeah, I understand where Mark is coming from. Well, what we haven't done in the last couple of nights, and uh, 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 and uh, hello, Ray. We didn't say hey. hello to Ray. Ray's been very quiet tonight. Um, is uh, is there anything in the news that's worth talking about? Wow, there's a uh, lot in the news. Bullshit. The same shit. No, I'm over. saying worth okay. talking about. <laughs> that was the you got news headline one. <laughs> News headline two, yeah. and news headline three. Yeah. Well, you, you, you know there was a it was a yeah the high five handshake between Putin and uh, uh, Prince Salman. Uh, ben, oh yeah, whatever he's, that was, yeah. Been face trifecta yeah. of villains that, that, about, that was about a bizarre thing I ever seen. Yeah, but that, that did you see me. how cool they were and the way they did it? You know, yeah. I mean, that you don't expect that yeah, today. Yeah. a little, you know, end, end zone dance. Or yeah, what they, 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 they do this afterwards? <laughs> is this it, the it, same it, prince it, that the uh, CIA is? Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, yeah, the they looked at each other villains. like they, they both like got away with murder. Like we, we got uh, we got Trump, Trump under our thumb. What what did you say, Kevin? We didn't hear you. They looked at each other like we got Trump under our thumb. What do we do next? Oh boy! I admit it's what they were high fiving. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't see that today because I was obviously preoccupied with other other shit. But I did see that uh, that that uh, Trump decided he wasn't going to meet with Putin because of the Ukraine situation, which no. is awfully is awfully yeah. convenient because a couple of days ago he said he didn't care about that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they, they turn, I thought he uh, he rescheduled it though, didn't he? I think no, what he doesn't want it. is he doesn't want no. a photo op of him with Putin in the middle of the whole. Uh, um, uh, I should know scandal. what the hell he wants. Sc his, sc his attorney came out. Uh, he's going. He he said he lied to Congress. Michael Cohen lied to Congress about what Trump knew about yeah. uh, dealing with Russia during the I, campaign. I tell you what I know. I know that his attorney is a liar, and so therefore. Why should you believe him on this and not on the other thing? Who you says know? they don't believe him? He was well, he was shilling for Trump. Yeah, but your what Trump wrote, from, what your Trump wrote, Giuliani. You know the fifteen questions that Trump submitted. Well, to, I know the uh, four, I know the four questions. Uh, Why is this nine. night different than all other yeah, nights? Yeah, Why on this night do we recline uh, instead of? I, oh. Well, uh, yeah. one of the questions uh, uh, coincided. With uh, coincided Cohen's new testimony <laughs> coincided so, with Cohen's new testimony. Okay. Well, so Cohen, when he came out and said this is the truth, 
uh, actually uh, confirmed what uh, Trump had said. So Trump didn't uh, put himself in a perjury position. <laughs> Why do you keep With defending that question, a criminal? He's put himself in a perjury position every time he tweets. <laughs> why, why don't you give him due process? Oh, oh my God. He's not a he's the one, he's, the one who, he's incriminated hey. himself so many times, it's ridiculous. How, well, about, how about him dangling a pardon to Manafort? <laughs> he, he, he didn't. Yes, Dang he did. He, he said, why would I take uh, it off the table? He said, nothing's off the table. Yeah, why, why no, he said, why would, he said, why would I take it? No, he said, why would I take it off the table, Phil? Right. He's, he's a negotiator. He's abusing power. He's but abusing doesn't... the ultimate power of the president for his own gain. What do you want him to do, sit there like, like, uh, like How about what he did to GM? Huh? What he's done to GM. So, I mean, uh, he know. didn't do anything to GM. He they they gave GM money to stay in the states, and then they turned around and they because fucked us. They, they fucked gave the money to people. all the electric car companies. He's, he's going to yeah. screw over all of them because well, he's let me, GM. Yeah, let me tell the you, the ultimate something. deal maker. I'm just telling you, I the am truth. not buying. Yeah, the GM ultimate GM deal maker, car. right? Yeah, the ultimate am, deal maker. I'm not going to buy a GM uh, car. Uh, yeah. Good for you, Fuck Phil. Sure Good not. for you, Phil. Good I'm going with that. I'm going to buy one just to maker. piss you off, and I don't need a car. What? I went. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Rob was saying something. I just said the ultimate deal maker. He's a, the art of the deal. It's Boy, the he made some great ones. Done. The deal is not deal. done. <laughs> those, those factories are not closed yet. The yeah. deal is not done. Well, wait a minute. I mean, can you explain, Phil? Phil, just explain Maybe. something to me. Now you're a Republican, right? And yeah, also, I, as is as I'm is as is the right that Republican as is Patrick. Although it's hard to detect, uh, but uh, uh, you're both you Republicans, and isn't it kind of a Republican conservative thing that you Ten don't ago, you don't yeah. try to tell business, you don't try to do stuff, uh, putting uh, putting tariffs on businesses and things like that. You don't interfere <laughs> in trade. We have a very unfair trade policy. No, 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 no. Forget China. about China. I'm well, talking about here. When you say that, well, we may uh, start putting some taxes on GM because they're moving. No, they're no, no, closing. He didn't put taxes. He There were subsidies that no, were given uh, to GM. Uh, no, but he, they, he said he was going to do some stuff which would impinge on their doing business. Yeah, and well, and isn't, that against, isn't that against Republican dogma? Not necessarily. They made an investment. Not and according GM to failure of conservatives, it isn't. What? Not according you know, to who? Wait a minute, R R R Ryan? Since I made that remark, I will explain it, but I also have something else to say that dovetails with this. One, as I was saying before, not according to a school of uh, conservative thinking, paleoconservatives, I've heard it referenced as, of which Pat Buchanan has been labeled as such when he's not, when he wasn't kissing George H, when he doesn't kissing George W. Bush's ass, when he had his own opinions. He has spoken out vociferously against NAFTA in general, as well as... Um, but, but that's in, not what um, we're talking about, though, here. Well, we're that's, talking about... No, what we're, uh, no, what we're, to, we're talking, what we're ta no, what we're talking about is he's been threatening GM because they're closing down these plants. And he's been threatening right. them economically. Where are they going to open now the question up? is: Do you like you, do you like your big they, government sorry. threatening big business? If it achieves no, I'm not asking you, Brian. I'm oh. asking Phil because it goes against everything Republican. Well, you know, uh, he is tr he made promises to the American people, which was to open up factories to create jobs well, in they, America. Well, he's certainly and, doing that. Well, hey, it ain't over till it's over. You know, it ain't over till the fat lady sings. But I also said not according to all Republican schools of thought, like the paleoconservatives, like your Pat Buchanan and I, whatnot. They're, you know, they're, they're, when you they say paleoconservatives, you're making them sound like they're... Uh, I am uh, not. That is cry, not, that's uh, not, what, not a phrase I coined. That's not a they're, phrase they're I coined. They're a form of Neanderthal. Like, yeah, they're paleoconservatives. Right. Right. We're talking about a school of conservative thought that predates Reagan era economics neoliberal clinton era that, economics that may as not well. exist anymore well it's it, it used to as recently as 10 years ago you had people who were saying yeah i'm a republican but i'm not a so did the roman let empire the market decide republican so yeah so did the roman empire but you know the uh, you know you so want a free now, market question, no it doesn't not necessarily you, maybe you want a free I, market but when when uh, when companies take uh, monies to open things up and to create jobs, and then they turn around and they've got factories in Mexico. They didn't close them. They're closing the ones in the United States. Well, that, that doesn't set right with Trump, and you know what? I, I agree with him. Yeah. Let, them, let them close the ones in Mexico.
Mark, I think it's Mark, time for paradigm Mark hasn't general. been here for about a year and a half, so let him say something. You got any thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, it, it's capitalism. You know, you, 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 if things don't make you, if you can make more money over there than you can make over here, you shut the one down here. Trump, Trump everybody knows that. Uh, Trump promised the people, I live in Ohio, Trump promised the people of Northwestern, Northeastern Ohio, he said, don't sell your houses, we're going to have more factories and bigger factories. Well, the government doesn't dictate that. That's socialist, okay? Mm -hmm. So, so, Phil? Comedy, I mean, Phil. This is, this is, you either believe in capitalism or you don't. No, yes. not, there's no absolute. What do you mean you believe in this or you believe in that? No, it's no, not black you, and you, white. You, no, capitalism, it's you have to It's a very gray in, world all, out there. Altogether or not. No, yeah. no, no. You, you, you're divisive. Uh, you're being divisive because what you're trying to do is you're trying to drive a wedge between what's good for the American people and some quasi social uh, structure that you believe okay. is either black or white. Okay, he's and being. He's, but he's being. He's, he's being. He's, you do the exact same thing. Hold when on it comes a second, Ray. I'll get to you. That's a social oh, no, program. You're, yes, you do. You said that's not. A, that's not capitalism. That's not. That's socialism. So you there pick was, the socialism you like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. uh, Ray. Ray, Ray, Ray had his hand up. Let me. Let's go to Ray. Oh, here comes Jason. I, I just this, to Royal say flush, that, ladies um, and gentlemen. Trump has companies and interests where he's manufactured all kinds of things offshore. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just uh, want to say that. Royal uh, flush. Yeah. Hello to Jason. Hi, Jason. What's up? What's up? You got your royal flush. Got a royal. Got a royal flush going here, folks. That's what it looks like. A royal flush. I, mean, I was going to take my computer into the bathroom, too, so I could flush the toilet, but I thought Phil had his soundboard hooked up. I, uh, I got to hook it back up. God damn, such a slacker. Yeah, such a slacker. Yeah. Vernon, any thoughts, I'm, from I'm any, move the any, any thoughts from you, Vernon, about this? Yeah. <laughs> if, if, rather than that, you could just, you know, do it in Morse code. You know? Yeah, when I see an he article. He doesn't need a job. He's got Amway. Yes, Jeff. <laughs> Yes, oh, Jeff. Oh. Okay. Yeah. One. Here's Je the no, other Jeff. Thing Jeff has his hand up, Brian. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see that. Um, I I always look at this thing uh, sometimes a little bit more uh, pragmatically from from General Motors' perspective. They're not losing. They're not making any money on the, on these. I'll call this Ohio facilities. I'm sure. I'm sure that's why they're doing. It. Well, you know why they're doing it is that the cars that they're building there aren't selling. And so, uh, but, but the, they just tooled up that Michigan plant, uh, just uh, totally retooled. It was closed for yeah, a while. Well, they, but, 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 but those this. companies. But, yeah, I was going to say yeah. that's the powertrain center on Nine Mile and Mound. I've been in there plenty of times for those, like two years. The place was empty. They're retooling the whole place. And then they're going to shut it down. You know, how fucking stupid is that? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, 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 mean, I have a feeling that that General Motors really screwed up on their plan for this five years or whatever, and all of a sudden they realize, holy shit, we're, we're going to lose our ass on this. Well, thing. supposedly and, and part people would just part, 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 supposedly part of the problem is they're not selling that many sedans now, and right? It's, you they're know, selling it's, SUVs and crossovers. Yeah, and, and, and also the pickups, yeah, trucks. The light trucks are big. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but yeah. you know what? Uh, tr Tesla can't meet their production uh, uh, quotas for their new car, uh, that $35,000 one. <laughs> if this plant is already tooled to build uh, a sort of a similar car, I wonder what it would take for Tesla to take that factory over uh, and build the, the cars the that they can't build right now. The one in Michigan was designed to do powertrains. It wasn't due to Oh, uh, it do wasn't the cars. electric. I thought it was no. the Volt. No. Uh, I, I thought it was the Volt and the Cruise. Well, they can, it's not like they can't retweak that and rework it, too. Make yeah. Tesla's. Yeah, the, That's assuming, of course, Elon Musk can get his head out of his ass. Well, you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. I, 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 it doesn't sound like I'm in the same ballpark when I'm talking about this. Why is my phone ringing? Um, uh, uh, is that, it? No, it isn't. I said, why oh. isn't it? Uh, oh. mm. The thing was that I the other day I read a thing. Uh, I get all these broadcasting 
newsletters and stuff. Hubbard Broadcasting, which is a major broadcaster, is letting a lot of people go. And I just wrote a quick note saying, you know, when is the radio business going to understand that they have to change the way they do business? You know, they have to change what they do. They have to reinvent themselves because, you know, radio reinvented itself once before. When television came in, they started playing music and later on they started doing talk shows. But now that's 50 years ago. There's a whole new dynamic out there and you have to retool and you have to come up with new ideas and not do things in the same way you have been doing them. And the same thing it's is true. Fear, Alex. The true. Uh, my friend. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Let me let me take this. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Hello. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Doctor Kleeman. Yeah. It is cancer. Okay. You're, you're going to admit her overnight, and then I guess tomorrow oh. during the. <laughs> Okay, how she? How, but she came through okay. It was easy, and it was okay. Yeah. Well. Sorry, I thought it was Alex's doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, good. Thank you so much, Doctor Kleeman, and thanks so much for doing this so soon, so she doesn't have to be in pain anymore. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Well, she's out of, he, you know, this is a great doctor. You know, some doctors will call you later on. I don't know when they finally got her in there, but he just said to me, uh, we're just bringing her out of the anesthetic. So he was calling me while he would, when he just finished and was coming, coming out of the anesthetic. How good a doctor is that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, uh, not to get off the subject, but Kevin was talking about a machine uh, that uh, that will. Excuse me. Let me good. have a, let me have a few moments of joy here. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Go ahead. Now, yeah. Kevin was talking about a rehab machine that uh, you you put your leg in and it moves the leg back and forth. Yeah. And uh, my rolfer today, I asked him about the operation and and so forth because he's he's actually a, his wife is a surgeon. Mm -hmm. uh, well, anyway, uh, he said that that machine is is what they uh, primarily use for the rehab, and you know, hopefully they'll send her home with one of those. Uh, and she'll be using that for, for a lot of her rehab because you have to keep the leg moving. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, it, it, it could be that uh, that they will recommend that to us. and uh, uh, But, you know, it will take it a step at a time. But the, the doctor said that it went fine and, uh, yeah. you know, there were no problems at all. And uh, we're bringing her out of the anesthetic now. And I'm going, boy, he, he, he hand me the phone, you know. Um, that's terrific. I, that made me very, very happy. Now it's about 20 after 11 where you are. Yeah. And so, this guy's been working since when? Uh, I, I would imagine he's been there since about noon today. Maybe. I don't know when he started doing operations. Probably before today. that. Yeah. Yeah. But he, nice. uh, he said that he, um, uh, well, if he, if he just finished it, 11, 20, 10, 20, 9, 20, she probably went in about nine twenty. So even if I had stayed there, I wouldn't have been there for her going in. So, you know. yeah. Uh, well, here, oh, here comes Bree. Oh, boy, can I fit him in? That's the only problem. Hey, so what, I can't. Go ahead, Bree, Alex, Bree, Bree, I'm out of the loop. Bree, I can't take the call from you tonight because we were we have a, a royal <laughs> flush. Marjorie broke her knee. Y yeah. Yeah. Doing what? You, you want me to get no. off? So no. You no. Can oh, no, 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 no. Stay, over. Phil. Stay, Phil. Don't worry. You know, Bree, I'm sure, understands. It's, you know, when we have 10 people, I just don't like to take more than that because I can't. It set him in. I'll fit him in. Let me just put him on here for a second and just tell him. Sure. Uh, Bree, are you there? No, he's not even there. We don't even have him. Bree, are you there? Okay. Well, I guess he's not there. All right. Um, Let me call in. Uh, but anyway, where was I? Uh, uh, well, oh, oh, we oh, oh, Jason, you are asked, uh, Bree, uh, I'm sorry, Bree, we can't take the call because we have already, you know, 10 people here and to fit another person in, I, I'm 11. I, I, I can't do it. What? Well, it's 11 with me. Yeah. Anyway, here, here's the deal. Let me just quickly tell you, Jason, she got a tourist, bumped into her from behind. She fell to the pavement and she broke her knee. 
All right. Oh, see, if they would have built a wall, the tourist wouldn't have been there. Yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that happened on Monday, and luckily we were a- able to find a doctor who by today, because she was in dire pain, was going to operate on it. Now that she's had the operation, the only pain she's going to have is getting over the operation. You know, so... Uh, I'm so, I'm so relieved. So did, did they have to replace anything or just put it back together? Uh, Bree just said, okay. Thank you, Bree. I appreciate it. Uh, what did they, what? I said, did they have to replace no, anything? No, 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 no. They, 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 had, they had put a couple of screws in there and a, a figure eight wire, I think he said, between the screws and it holds the whole thing in place. And if in uh, six, eight, nine, eight months, she's uncomfortable with the screws because they're maybe uh, jutting out a little bit into her you know, whatever, he, he can go back in and just take the screws out because he put the screws in to get it to bind, right? You know. Yeah. But. Um, so let's talk Alex, about this. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here, here really comes Kevin. Here comes to Kevin. Have that done that quickly. Oh, Kevin? Well, yeah. What is oh, that? Those, 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 those are the screws ring that? that they put in. Yeah. And this could be the T bar that they put in, but these are the kind of screws that they put in. Oh, okay. Oh, why are did, those why? the ones that you had in you? or? Uh, yeah, these are all the ones that were in my ankle. No, God. Uh, crap. I, he yeah. seemed, I seem to get the idea there were only going to be two screws. Uh, I, I, you know, but I'm not sure of that, you know. Hey, so but the doctor must have been a Republican because they're pretty quick to put the screws to you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's yeah. right. <laughs> that's true. But they, uh, they do, like you said, they, I don't know if you can see the reflection there, but they do, they got this this uh, thread type on there, they lock. And sometimes these type oh. of threads supposedly don't back out, but sometimes they will. Yeah. And that's what he was talking about when they come, when they come out. Yeah. If yeah. they get uncomfortable over time. Yeah. And the bone will push them out too. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. By the way, Bree you know. wrote, uh, just wrote another uh, a note to me. And he said that in uh, Dubai, the doctors make house calls. Uh, you know, probably not surgery, though. No, uh, no, uh, no, <laughs> no. Actually, I think that's where they prefer to do surgeries. At the I, house. Listen, it would have been wonderful. <laughs> hey, it, it would um, have been wonderful. Take a phone call from my daughter. If Bree wants to call in, I'll jump off. Does Bree uh, want to call? Uh, Bree, if you he want to call, listening. Kevin has has to take a call from his daughter. So I'll, uh, I'll jump off. And so he'll jump, jump off, he Bree, and you can whatever. jump on from Dubai if you want to. Okay. I'll you know, keep Alex, listening. But take Alex, Alex just travel. took a call from the doctor. You know, we can all we can all just take calls. You know. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll get back on if I can. If not, have a good weekend. Thanks, Kevin. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. Bree, if you're listening, you can call. You're welcome to call now because we we now have room for you on this uh, rather large panel. Uh, But Alex didn't jump off because he's on the eighth floor. (laughs) I I see. Yeah. Uh, Bree? Okay. No, no, he said. No, Bree? Yes, yes. Call. Yes, yes. (laughs) We just got rid of (laughs) Kevin for you. We made room for you on the panel. So uh, remove this person from the group. Okay. So call. Come on, Bree. Come on. Call us. Anyway, where was I? So Good news. One, uh, one, cl- one uh, question of clarification, Alex. Uh, yeah. what, sh- what Marjorie broke was she cracked her patella, right? I, yeah. I guess that's what she broke, yeah. The, knee, the, the kneecap. kneecap. Is the yeah. The kneecap. The kneecap. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it, it was a, he said a break across the, f- the, the width of it or whatever. And uh-huh. uh, it was just broken. And supposedly it got shattered a little bit, but not a lot. So, yeah. It's not going to be, it, it's going to be, a, it's a rough rehab, you know, she's going to have to yeah. do a lot of physical therapy. And um, uh, I, 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 it, what, what just bothers me is that eight, uh, eight months of, of, of absolute grief and work because somebody in a matter of seconds knocked you over when they weren't well, looking. That's life. You know, <laughs> did, did the woman or the person who ran her over explain what happened was there an explanation i don't know and neither does marjorie i don't think because the whole thing you know when things like that happen to you you don't sit around paying great attention to what people are saying 
The woman it sounds did, like a hit and run. The, the, no, the no, woman, no, didn't run. The, the, the woman stuck around, helped her uh, along with Marjorie's uh, one of Marjorie's bosses or one of her co-workers, I should say, who helped her back to the office. And the woman kind of joined them for a little way and uh, was concerned. You know, nobody had the state of mind to get her number and it, her right, name. Right, right. And, and I would have done that. Uh, you know, I would have suggested doing that if I were there, but she didn't, and I can't. I can see why. I mean, she just fell down. She hurt her knee. She's concerned with that. You're not concerned with the name of the person who did it. You know, and the person who did it is going. Whoo. Well, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's woo now. Yeah, well, you know. What I mean, would you do? What could you really do? You know, uh, well, well, that that the, person might have insurance, well, like uh, 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 homeowners insurance or something. That, uh, homeowners uh, want to be a but personal liability. Uh, personal whatever. liability on the well. Homeowners. Let's let's say, and I think we probably will have to put out some money here. Not a lot, but we'll have to put out some money. Maybe a couple hundred bucks. Maybe a thousand bucks. I don't know. What if she can't return the work right away? Well, you know? well, yeah. Well, what I'm saying is, if if that were the case, uh, this woman could use her homeowner's insurance or whatever, yeah, to help take care of it. Like you know, that. but okay. because we don't know who it was, uh, we're never going to be able to, you know, yeah. do anything. Yeah, about a lot us. of times people have an umbrella policy that that handles that liability if something something like yeah. that happens. Yeah. Yeah. I have one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Want to borrow mine? <laughs> <laughs> let me ask no, you. No, uh, let me ask you something, something Phil. How, how do you yeah. like your um, How do you like your trash can, your Mac Pro? Uh, I like it. Uh, it's a lot faster when I'm uh, adjusting a Lightroom things. Like uh, it's yeah. almost instantaneous. Uh, you know, when you when you when you change a setting, you see it happen real time. Whereas with the uh, even though that. Mini was fast. Yeah, it's it, not that fast. It was fast. a lot of yeah. lag. Yeah, uh, compared to this. Yeah. And what I'm going to do for another 500 bucks, I can get rid of the 16 gig uh, memory and change it to 64. Because I was oh, I, I, I was looking on eBay, and I, there are quite mm -hmm. a few companies that uh, guarantee them 100. Yeah. percent And I'm wondering if it's good to buy it there because for 3200, I can get a 64k. Uh, a uh, okay. or, uh, you know, six, 64 uh, gig of memory with uh, a, a one terabyte uh, flash drive. Uh, well, uh, how, how many core? Uh, at 12 core. 12 core. Oh, buy it right away. I have a six core. Yeah. Uh, the 12 core, you could you could produce you could, movie st studios. Yeah. Use those kinds of things. Pixar. And, and it's only something like 3,200 bucks. You know. So. Yeah, I pay two grand. But I bought it from a friend. Yeah, uh, and it's got a two terabyte drive, uh, a flash, a flash uh, uh, now, SSD. I'm, I'm putting a question out there for the audience. If anybody has the answer, write me. I don't want an answer right now. But I have certain apps on my current computer that I want to take over to my new computer that I can't download anymore because they are not available any longer. Okay, that I need. You put them on is, the time is, machine. Is there? Yeah. Is there any way I can make those work? And how do I kind of? upgrade because see the trouble is with these with these new Macs is they only have the flash memory they don't have hard drives in them so I can't have like a four terabyte hard drive and say okay uh, let's do a backup to them that drive of my main drive how do you how do you do that you know I have two four terabyte drives right there yeah and I have an, a 64 terabyte drive uh, the Drobo mm -hmm. I don't know if see it yeah uh and you know, so i got all the memory in the world no, but, but no but that's not the question i'm asking and i and i don't want an answer now anyway yeah. because that would be very boring broadcasting yeah. i don't know how many programs but how do i can... how do i get the backup from that machine onto a new machine now i gotta tell you i went out the other day and i bought something at costco that i couldn't believe an eight terabyte uh a three o usb drive which is fast Okay, yeah. eight gigs, eight terabytes rather, for a hundred and nineteen dollars. Uh, so you know fun. those I can use for this new system, but I want to know how do I how do I make it emulate yeah, the current system? You gotta be careful system? with those. Why? Well, I bought one too, an eight terabyte, uh, one hundred and forty nine uh, over the summer. Yeah. But uh, I read online. There's a guy who does a lot of photography. And he 
Well, he moves around a lot, so and he says that that unit just crashed on him. They're not reliable. They're yeah. not. I, I wouldn't use them for backup. They're good for primary, but they they go bad. Even the even the high end ones. We put them in servers. Yeah. A lot of times, um, for people who run like hypervisors, like a VMware hypervisor is small, yeah. and they don't want to spend the money for hard drives to put in the servers. Mm -hmm. So they get these USB keys, and they and the the operating systems loaded on those keys. So when the machine boots, it boots the the uh, hypervisor off of that. Those yeah. things go bad frequently. Yeah, this yeah. is this is like a Seagate, you know. Yeah, uh, I don't care what brand it is, uh, they, yeah, they go I, bad. But my, have, the, my uh, but that isn't my that isn't my question really so much as it is, how do I get the the basic uh, configuration of my computer from my backup? It won't all fit on a um, on a on a one terabyte flash drive. So can, how do I get it so it? that it goes to other drives as well? What? Huh? Can you just take certain information from your backup and put it on other drives so that you can separate it and then just put the programs itself on the I'll have, main... to, I'll have to play around with that and see. Because yeah. there's one program that I use to post these shows that went out of business, and it's the only really good one I've ever used for, for doing uh, what they call RSS files or XML files. Uh, but anyway, I just if anybody has an answer for me on how you how you do a backup from an old machine onto a new machine that only has a thousand, you know, one terabyte of flash memory and you've got a, at least a four terabyte main drive, although it isn't all filled with uh, with why, the backup. Why do you want something as powerful as that uh, 12 core? Well, as long as I can afford it, I may as well do it, right? <laughs> yeah, but do you need it? I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, other... I need it. I use a, I'm a power user when it comes to this stuff, you know? Yeah, Every, uh, you yeah know. I just I just didn't like seeing the sliders. You know, you slide it, and then you waited uh, three, four seconds for uh, something to happen. I yeah, wanted it well, to happen well, in real time. Well, well yeah. Yeah, and that's what would happen here. And why not? You know, but if it's a twelve core and it's got one tear, you know, it's it's fully loaded. It's like you know, right. it's like well, those. It's those like Apple took a dump. That, what? That movies. Those are the kinds of things that movie studios. Oh, would use. radio for one. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, that that unit new was what ten grand, twelve grand. Uh, I just say it was somewhere around twelve grand. Yeah. 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 But they guarantee it a hundred percent. This one company, and they have, and the one company has, on on eBay has great ratings too. So, uh. you know, uh, I don't know that you can go wrong because I found with Max, believe it or not, they hold up really well. You yeah. know, they may get old because the technology gets old, but like this Mac Pro I have here, still running strong, and I bought it in uh, two thousand eleven. Well, the the my trash cans are 2014. Well, that they no, call it's a 2013 because it. they the, 13. The last time they made it, it was 2013. Oh. It's you know they may, may still be making them, but they call them a 2013. Oh. If one just oh. came off the assembly line, it's a 2013. Yeah, that's I when see. the technology. Uh, that's that's how old the technology is. Mm -hmm. Even though the unit. Yes, might be late late 2013. Mine's a three and a half gigahertz six core. Uh, yeah. 16 gig, and uh, I, I've got a real fast. And by graphic. the way, by the way, you know the other thing that that Apple hasn't done with those new ones uh, is they haven't. Uh, you know there is no audio input on them. You uh, have to use you have to use a USB. Uh, that's because radio is dead. <laughs> well, I mean, no, but you have to use a USB B input. And they, I, I don't know that. What, what kind of audio input are you looking for? I'm looking for an audio input that I take the jack and I put the uh, audio in. You know, like a not a quarter, but an eighth inch. A Motorola uh, jack. It, it, Motorola. It, you know, yeah. small Motorola. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Motorola jack. I don't think mine has that. Actually, actually, mine, no, 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 mine, wait a minute. Hold on, mine, mine uses that. mine uses Sylvania jacks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It used to have a Raytheon plug, but it doesn't have yeah, it anymore. Not, it's not a jack off, huh? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't think I don't. I think that I've either got a Thunderbolt or a uh, or USB. Uh, I'll look at the back. How do you get How do you that. get your audio 
your uh, analog audio into that machine? Uh, what I have is I have a uh, this uh, Behringer thing, and uh, the USB plugs into into the into that, and then I have analog jacks that come out of that into the board. Okay, so that's probably what I got to do, something like that. But. It's twenty nine dollars for that. It was you know who told me about those uh, it was uh, B- Miranda. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, let's get back to what's going on in the world. Um, I'll tell you what I'm getting sick of, okay? I, I'm dead, sick to death of MSNBC. I heard their ratings are up. And I'll, t- I'll tell you why. Uh, because I just can't stand that every hour it's the same fucking show. You know, they will take one film clip of, of Donald Trump standing on the lawn about ready to hit the helicopter and keep running that clip at the top of every show for the next 12 hours. And then they get this another four, four people, three people sitting around discussing it. And then they change topics and get another three people discussing that. And it's the most boring television I've ever seen in my life. You know, there, I got I to gotta ask the question, isn't there other fucking stuff going on in the world, you know, that we don't know about, that we got to go to BBC to find right out, out about? Um, you know, Alex. I just, what, what, who, who's talking? Uh, just really quick. Oh, Marie, yeah. I, I like to, uh, I know you don't like them. I know this, but I, I do occasionally watch the Young Turks and, yeah. um, they last night they do this whole thing on just US politics, current US politics and they have I don't know if you follow but they've dropped all their entertainment programming and they're just going political and it's it's just getting so boring now because they just keep repeating the same things it's like they get it's like a dog with a bone well you know, also and, and also they're guilty of it too also they're all guilty of one very basic sin and that is if if Trump doesn't like you why do you have to give him any extra added publicity why it's the not hanging fruit well yeah why not why not ignore Trump until he says something or does something that's important rather than every little whim that he has every day because every time he does a tweet he goes how will this stir up the news and so uh, all you've got on these news channels now is really we could just call them trump television because if if it isn't if it isn't a trump story about trump and argentina it's then uh, uh cone the next story is about cone and the next story is about uh, uh what's his name the the guy that was the head of his election committee i mean it's just, and then when the hour's over, you go, was there anything here that didn't have Somebody to do with to Trump? There. You know, That's yes, Mark. Y- y- yes, um, uh, who had their hand up first? Uh, 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 Mar- uh, uh, Ray, did you have your hand up first or did Brian? Uh, 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 let's go to Brian, then we'll go to... I just said something we'll, go, well, well, let's go to Ray first. Ray and then Brian. I, I just wanted to say there's a, app, a BBC app, news mm-hmm. app, and I, 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 I have it on my iPhone. It's really good. And I get to see all the news that's happening all around the world, and there's just usually one or two things about the U.S. on the front page, and then there's stuff all about everything else. Well, I see a story on BBC, for instance, one day about the resurgence of Nazi youth in Germany, you know. And that's an yeah. important story, but I didn't see it anywhere on American television because— I, I saw that on CNN. Did you see it on CNN? It's happening in Poland, yeah. too. Yeah. Anyway. They give it a little air time, usually. Yeah. You know, just a mention. Yeah. Brian. Yeah. Two, three things. One, um, I don't like MSNBC anymore on account of the fact that they're too uh, corporate and neoliberal. <laughs> two, Bree, you should check out the Jimmy Dore show. And three, um, if you want to, who the uh, fuck is Jimmy Dore? Who, who the fuck? Much who, like you know, the kids the, at South Park start giving who, Eric. Who, 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 who the who the fuck is Jimmy? Who the fuck is Jimmy Dore? He's uh, right next to the gate. Is he right next to Bob Window? Look him up. Look him up. Is this another uh, just another soothsayer that we got in the wind here? Well, look up Jimmy Dore, look up uh, Chris Hedges. They'll tell you that the Democratic Party is almost just as corrupt as 
as Almost. the guy we have in the well, White I, House. I, 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 I was saying that all the time. I was saying I was saying that all the time over at uh, over at uh, Sirius, and that's why I don't have a job anymore. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. You've got people. You've got other people who would back you up on that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe get in touch with these people. Have like Chris Hedges on your program or something. No, oh, no, thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll go it alone. You know. Uh, but um, uh, I just, you know. Oh I, yeah, I, I like RT as well. I watch that. Well, if you like the Russians, you know. Well, how is that any more pro-Russian propaganda any more than the BBC oh, is my, pro-British propaganda? Yeah, like, no, 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 wait a minute, no, wait a minute, no, wait, no, wait a minute, CIA no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're you're dealing in what aboutism. The fact is, it's all wrong. Okay, I'm not going to ru- ri- watch RT because they have na- said their stated mission is to proselytize and do propaganda for the Soviet Union, uh, for the Soviet Union, for Russia. Uh, and uh, there's no question about that. And uh, so uh, my point is, um, uh, why should I watch that? And yes, if you say somebody else is propaganda for that country or this country, why should I watch them too? You know, I want. So do you get the yeah. you, get, you get the whole picture okay. from all sides. Okay, uh, Ray. The I think Ray had his hand up first, then Jason. Yes, Ray, then yeah, Jason. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, to say that uh, I. I I watch the BBC and I read it, and also the French news when I can, when my wife mm-hmm. uh, can translate for me. And they're, they're sort of like what used to be here 10, 20 years ago, where they, they actually do try to uh, remain neutral. And it, it hasn't become like our news yet, yeah. as far as I can tell. I, I, it doesn't seem to me like it's as biased as, and propagandized as you know msnbc and fox and all that i, I don't see but it that's not news if you want news you got to tune into the networks and the six o'clock evening news that is the way it's been for the past 50 that's true. years that's true that's true that's true and they try to be unbiased i mean they're they're probably the least biased of all the the news operations out there i mean if you watch lester holt doing nbc news you're not going to see the same preponderance of political agenda that you see at msnbc all right um yes so did you see the uh or did you talk about at all with uh uh the prince of saudi arabia high-fiving yeah we mentioned that earlier i didn't see it uh but uh he high-fived he was smiling Dude, it, it was so such a yeah. I whacked him. You whacked him. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Sad. It yeah. was just. It, it was funny. It was just like you know that it's two heads of states. You know, hey, you know that's what it was about. We're who, living in a Putin's very big. Twenty sailors that'll trade for uh, 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 what's his name's body, uh, the uh, journalist body. You know what? Putin took 20 sailors and a bunch of sh- uh-huh, ships, uh-huh, uh-huh, and, and uh-huh. he's willing to trade. <laughs> for what? Uh, for Khashoggi. For Khashoggi's body? It's in pieces right. somewhere. Right, yeah. Well, and, and by the way, they dismantled his body while he was still alive. Is that what the tape uh, That's showed? what the high five was all about. That's what the high five <laughs> was all about, yeah. Well, uh, Putin was just saying, hey, you're learning. You did, you did good, kid. <laughs> you know, you know well, it's funny. That's what it, it was it, about. It's funny. I saw a movie the other night. Yeah, I love. Uh, I, I like Turner Classic movies. Occasionally, I go over there because there's something I'm playing, and it's it's an old film, and I, you know, it's just kind of nice to see black and white, you know. And it was a Warner picture, and I can't remember what the name of it was, but it was about this uh, this uh, person in the Mid East or something uh, doing something or another, and it was kind of a mystery thing. And you know the town he was in it was Aleppo. <laughs> really? Yeah, it was Aleppo. Now you, it was it was Aleppo in Hollywood, but it was Aleppo. They had a big sign at the train station, Aleppo. Welcome uh, to Aleppo. Welcome to Aleppo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, th- that, of course, being as you know, the Six Marks brother. So uh, yeah. And uh, Zeppo. I have. That's the last time I'll do that joke. I think it's kind of gotten gotten whiskers on. Old, old. Yeah. I got Zeppo right here. Oh, no, Zippo. that's a Zippo. That's a Zippo. Uh, and, and, but, you know, I mean, I just... Uh, uh, and, and the other thing that bothers me, by the way, as long as I mention Lester Holt, is... Uh, the, oh, there we go, Al Jazeera. Yeah, Al Jazeera is a good news yeah, organization. Too. Great old news organization. But anyway, uh, 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 I 
the thing about Lester Holt that drives me nuts, and it's probably true of all the other newscasts at night, the network newscasts, is that uh, uh, at the end of the show for about the last seven minutes, they're all feel-good stories. You know, little, little Tommy wanted a kitty and he got a kitty for Christmas. And oh, a fireman! A fireman saved a, a, a cow. I don't know. You know, it's just these feel-good stories for seven minutes. And I'm going, wait a minute. This is a uh, this is a half-hour newscast of which there's only really a palpable amount of 21 minutes worth of news time because the rest is commercials for heart medicine and cancer cures. All right. Uh, and and so that will make it last. A, yeah, and I'm so that leaves right you for that leaves you with 21 minutes, and now you're taking seven minutes out, which is about a quarter of that, right? And uh, what are you doing with it? Well, you're Remember, you, filler. You, you, you're playing feel good filler stories. Give me some fucking news, you know. Leave with a story that uh, maybe makes me think, you know. Not you, you know, know why. Do you know why they started using wrestling on TV? Because it was cheap and it was filler, you know? Yes. Uh, you know and that's... Oh, well, uh, you, know, oh, well, you, you wor worse, you know what these stories are worse, most of the time? I can uh, see a story that Lester Holt says talks about, like, and then there was this crash and blah, 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 and then I will go on YouTube, and it's a YouTube clip. Wow. And they, so they, they're, they're playing clips from YouTube and passing them off as news. So well, I mean, what? It's, it's inexpensive. Where do we get our information anymore? There's, you know, I mean, if if you're going to be as as snarky as as Brian is on all of this, yeah, every country has an agenda. Every news organization has an agenda. So who are you to believe? You know, it's real today. I liked Al Jazeera America when it was on the air. Yeah, I liked Al Jazeera. I, you know, they, everybody got them all wrong as a news organization. The problem with Al Jazeera, at least in the Middle East, is. They hate them in the Middle East because they were always they were the people who, for instance, were against against really reporting how bad Saddam Hussein was to his own people. They made Al Gore rich. How they, right. they bought they bought his they, network. Oh, they bought they bought his right. old network. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, weren't was they pro Saudi million? Arabia though? Was it five, no? It was, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was, no. That was the one thing is that uh, uh, Al Jazeera wasn't. Pro uh, and correct me on this, uh, uh, Bree, because you live in that part of the world. But uh, that wasn't a problem, really, to tell you the truth. Uh, no, no. Uh, they, in fact, well, were, I think, disliked by the Saudis. Do you know anything about this, Jason or or Bree? Yeah, yeah. Um, right now, uh, Al Jazeera is blocked in Saudi Arabia and in the UAE. Okay, so there, there's the answer to your question about whether they're, so they're pro Saudi pro, Arabia. But why isn't the uh, Saudi Arabia and, and uh, Yemen issue not being broadcast <laughs> okay. a lot more right now? Because for, for there's a lot of shit going that, on in Yemen. When you yeah, say that, it's, you, it's the Iranians. There you go. When you say everybody always wants to link Saudi Saudi Arabia and because they're the one dropping the bombs. Yeah. No, 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 it's the no. Iranians that are. The they're Iranians and the Yemens the are the same side. No, they're it, not. It, yes, it, the, it, it's basically Iran. It's a proxy war between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Yeah, it, it always has been in, in Yemen. But the reason that the uh, Saudi is there trying to uh, hold up the elected government, and the that Iranians are there trying to throw it over. That's correct. Yeah. So yeah. that's why the Saudi Arabians bombed a bus of children. I and think never made collateral damage, you know. I mean, oh, uh, that, yeah, collateral damage. You know, hey, fuck, man, you need to readjust your scope if that's your collateral damage. Well, is your bombing? Yeah, but it's okay shoulder. with you. For, for the, you know, I'll give you a whataboutism. It's okay. It's okay if the if the uh, from Gaza they throw in a thousand bombs and they and they bomb uh, kids in in Israel, but. Uh, you know, I mean, they, we're kids dealing with animals. Uh, they don't. They don't bomb kids in Israel. They bomb anybody. We, <laughs> no, come on. They're not discriminatory. Just unoccupied like property, unoccupied land. Well, you know, if the Saudis would buy our good weapons, they would be more accurate, and they could just 
hit the uh, just the Iranians. Other people's land. Or it's okay for the neoliberal left to fall asleep when someone like Hillary Clinton, if she were president, to have expanded on Obama's policy of expanded drone strikes in other countries, of which I would have just been as critical yeah. of her as I am of Trump about these. You know, instead of being able to control but I'm not a from afar, you should have to be in that robot right on top of it. That doesn't make any fucking sense. Mark, you got any, any comment on all this? Because you've been uh, a little quiet there, and for not having been on for a year and a half, I think we should hear what you have to say. Yeah, there's no Iranian bombers in Yemen. You know, there's no reason that, that we're supporting the Saudis other than... Uh, we're selling weapons to them. <laughs> and Trump wanted and, to build a hotel there. And that was a big high five between Putin and the, the prince of Saudi, you know, because it's like, hey, if the U.S. stops selling you the weapons, we got we got your back. We're right here. I can't believe that we're that we're support that we are not you universally opposed to a guy that cuts a guy to pieces and puts him, you know, dissolves him in acid. Ah, he's going to give why, us a lot of money. Why are we not universally opposed to that? Because he's going to give us a lot of money. Wait, wait a minute, Rob, Rob, let news. Rob talk. Rob? I said because he's going to give us a lot of money. They, yep. they, Trump Trump expects that he's going to spend a lot of money here. So. $14 billion. You know, almost exactly, every administration, bro. every administration has been in the same sort of predicament with no, one country haven't. or no, another, no, they even haven't. Saudi Arabia. And, and, oh, well, but they quietly... They quietly continue to support Saudi Arabia when these things were going on. They stand and up for those things, things that are in that are no, they're, they're like that human rights. No, they have to work with them. They realize they have a relationship with these countries and they deal right. with them on certain levels, but they come out and they condemn these kind of actions. They don't give them the green light or look the other way. Yes, well, we want to sell right. them. Yes, we have commerce with other countries, but we always stand up for human rights. Yes, but uh, Trump, I, Trump I is saying right. that it's not definitive. It's it's not definitive that uh, how many that he, does it take? Ordered, that he how was many ordered. does it take? <laughs> it's it not doesn't matter how proven. many it takes. We <laughs> don't have thousand, all what we have. A thousand Americans. All that we works. have is leaked information. Uh, the, he doesn't trust, trust his own CIA. He doesn't trust his own intelligence. Yeah, I mean, when you're when the CIA says that you can pretty much take it to the bank. Not, not Trump. He doesn't believe anything. Pretty that, much the community take it to the bank. They said the same thing uh, about the uh, Iraq and the Phil, weapons. Phil, Phil, let me just ask you a question. Trump, Trump do, do you think, from what you've CIA read and from what you've heard, what, to the Senate. from what you've she, from what you've heard, and and what you what you what you've been able to ascertain? Do you think the crown prince had a, a part in Kasoji, 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 whatever his murder? I don't know. Really? Oh, oh well, well, I'm. Then, I, I then think. I think. Then you're the last person in America who can give me that answer. No, the other person is Trump. If why is this funny? Why is this funny to Phil? Why is what do you mean? Why is it funny? Because the news is funny. What the situation is There's nothing is funny about this. You, you don't. Funny. You don't jump to conclusions. I've already seen well, thousands of lives. The I have guy seen... went in to get a the license to get married. He got cut into pieces and and, and, and dissolved in years, ass. He would have been cut into pieces anyway. You laugh about. Anyway. <laughs> you you know, laugh after about. he got married. Wow. Yeah, but he does have a you point. Know, he does have a point, time, Phil. Name me a country who hasn't done it. Right. And, and and the Americans just sit back. They pay lip service. You want to act this. like we're so they pay good? We do this. Yeah, we're we so do this shit every day. day. We're so Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Trump is the first but, one that said the way it really is. But no matter what you say, bad, wait, hold on a second. No matter no no matter Trump what you say, off. Phil, and I and I have to agree with with uh, Mark, and that is. You know, still, there is nothing funny about what happened to Kosoji, and it's nothing that we should countenance, and we know who did it, and the CIA knows who did it, and the Turks know who did it. They have video of it, and yet, and yet, Trump, because I guess maybe in the future he wants to build a hotel in Saudi Arabia, uh, it doesn't believe it. Yeah, well, you know, Trump is saying that he doesn't have the smoking gun. And you know what? We've seen thousands of Americans die in in the Iraq War, and we spent trilli trillions of dollars. 
trillions of dollars over a war that we were told that there were weapons of mass destruction, and they were sure about it. And the CIA knew, and this one knew, and that one knew. But meanwhile, we spilled blood, and there were no weapons of mass destruction. And it may be the same thing Yeah, but on now. the other hand, you turn around and no, tell me it's good that Saddam Hussein is dead. The only ones who were sure of it, Phil, was Rumsfeld and Cheney. They were the Cheney. only ones who were absolutely no. sure that we they got, had weapons of mass destruction. No, no. We got we got information from all sorts well, of things. Well, we got to get it. We got to get yellow, it. That's a whole cake. That's a whole nother was a bullshit story that was debunked. That was a whole no, that's a whole nother night of stories. It, 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 it took discussion. 17 years. All right. Of of All right. See, we should bomb Israel. Uh, oh God! Can I close this show off, please? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank Rob. I appreciate it, Rob. Patrick, always love having you here. Jeff, good having you here. Good on you, Ray. Hey, Jason, I wish you could do it more often because uh, you're really you you participate very well. Phil Meyer, thank you so much. Uh, uh, also, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, oh, boy. No? Uh, thank you. No, uh, 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 Vernon. V Vernon. 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 <laughs> and uh, Brian, correct, thank you so much. Mr. D. Ludwig. Uh, Mark, Mark, make it more often than every year and a half, okay? Because we love every, you. Every year, every Christmas. Every Christmas. And, <laughs> and Bree, thank you so much. That He's over there in Dubai. I'd like all of you to be give a big wave goodbye to the studio audience out there so that they can, yeah, yeah, that's it. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the citizen panel, uh, what, what amounted to a royal flush. That's when we have, uh, what is it, uh, 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 10 other people plus me. So that makes 11 people all at once. Gets a little difficult on the old Bennett to keep that kind of road jam going. Uh, but anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, uh, I'm so happy that Marjorie is out of uh, harm's way and she's out of the uh, operating room. And uh, thanks to everybody who's been sending us notes and telling us uh, how, how their thoughts and wishes are with us. Um, and next uh, is Jack Bishop with the intersection at uh, mid at one o'clock. There'll be connections. Uh, we're back again Tuesday right after. Uh, um, uh, Damian Chaplin has the exchange with our program at 10. Same time, same station in life. And as always, if, especially if you're at the hospital right now uh, and she's comatose, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. -bye,